Hello and welcome back to another video looking back over the year. Today's going to be the moments of 2018. Yesterday we looked at the best players, today's the best moments. And there are, they are going to be mainstream, I'm not going to lie. Um, but tomorrow I'll have an alternative Highlights of the Year video, so if you want to come back for that, uh, then please be welcome. But we're thinking about um, moments on the pitch particularly. Uh, three of them are from the Championship and one of them from the Premier League. But all of them... Uh, it's been difficult to whittle them down, really, because you could go back and you could think about really massive moments that, you know, like the game against Leeds that was on the back of this poor run of form, but they managed to pull the result out of the bag. That's quite a big moment for me. Um, the Blues game, having been promoted the night before, coming and playing so well and the atmosphere in the ground. Uh, or the game against Sheffield Wednesday, although it was a drab nil-nil game, to lift the trophy like that in front of the North Bank and then the, the celebrations afterwards were superb. But perhaps we'll touch on some of those tomorrow in the alternative moments of the, sea, of the year. The first moment, we're going back to Good Friday, uh, 30th of March 2018, up in Middlesbrough. Get a ground where we hadn't won since 1951. A long, long time with, you know, really poor record up there. Uh, it was after an international break. We took the lead through Costa. And then Cavaliero added a second. We looked comfortable in that game, going in half time 2 0 against the Borough team who were around the playoffs. The game changed around about the hour mark. Costa was through on goal for a third and went down under a challenge. The Wolves players were adamant that it should have been a red card and a free kick to Wolves. However, the referee didn't see it the same way. He played advantage and nothing happened. And the Wolves players started to lose their head then. We saw Nevis getting sent off from two yellow cards, we saw Doherty being sent off from two yellow cards, uh, and then we saw nine players for Wolves really dig in their heels and play, well they didn't play well, <laughs> they defended like beavers as uh, Chris Kamara said once. Every man was behind the ball, everybody worked their socks off, Connor Cody took one to the face to stop them from scoring at one point, but the moment of the game, the full time whistle went and the release of all that nervous energy and the Nuno running onto the pitch, but what sticks with me is Sace lying flat on his back in front of the Wolves fans, eyes closed, absolutely exhausted. He put everything into that, and that's a real moment of this of the season. Is just how much the Wolves players wanted those three points, and they they made it happen. It was superb. Then a week later, seventh of April, Cardiff away, two consecutive Friday nights, uh, and you would never ever ever make uh, see a game like the Cardiff game. First against second, for me, before the game, I remember saying whoever won the game was going to go on and win the title because I think Cardiff would have been a point behind us had they won that game. And uh, with our fixtures that we had, we had Derby who were around the playoffs at the time. It could have been difficult. And Cardiff, I think, had a more favourable run-in. And... I just felt that the momentum would have shifted at that point. And it was a really tight affair. I remember a couple of strange things. Uh, Benicophobia was playing that wide on the right. Cardiff had a couple of chances in the first half that they really should have put away. One that, just off the top of my head, went flashed across the face of our goal, which they just could not tap in. In the second half, then, it was a tale of two free kicks from Ruben Neves. Uh, one free kick went 30 yards over the bar. And I think Cardiff sort of thought, well, OK. Maybe he's not as good as we think he is then on free kicks. And the Cardiff goalkeeper then for the second one was caught off guard a little bit. Um, and Neves placed it beautifully into that corner. And I've never celebrated a goal like that. It felt like the goal to get us promoted. Then, the end of the game. You'll never see a game end like this again. It was madness. But I remember thinking at the time that when teams get promoted, you often see one of these crazy sort of moments remember Watford against Leicester in the um, in the playoffs where they missed Leicester missed a penalty Watford went down the other end and scored or you have like Doncaster and Brentford with the penalty miss and going down the other end things like that happen uh, but they just don't happen to Wolves or they haven't happened to Wolves in the past uh, so the first penalty Connor Cody gave it away he had his hands all over I can't remember who it was the player uh, who went down and then Gary Medine stepped up Hadn't scored for Cardiff at that point. Ruddy dives to his left and saves. At that moment, there were quite a lot of parallels for me between promotion in 2003 at Cardiff with Matt Murray making the save, diving the same way and, and 
and that Cavalier are then diving in and giving away another penalty a minute or so later. You just thought, well, we've blown it now. They will definitely score a second penalty. But Junior Hoylett stepped up, smashed off the bottom of the bar. We managed to just about keep it out for the next couple of seconds. And then Mike Dean blows his final whistle and all hell breaks loose. I've never celebrated an end of a game like that. It's a moment that lived long in my memory for many, many years to come. And still now when I watch the game, it's often on Sky as a EFL classic already. Or if I watch the highlights on YouTube... I never think that John Ruddy's going to save the first one. It's quite amazing, really, that my next moment comes only a few days after that. Three of these moments of the year happen within two weeks of each other. It just shows you the crest of a wave that we were riding at that time. And again, another Ruben Neves goal. But this is something unrivaled, I think, by anything else that we've possibly ever seen at the Molyneux. So Diogo Jota put Wolves 1-0 up against Derby with a well-taken finish past uh, Scott Carson. And then it was still tight, but Wolves are always in control of the game. But when you're only 1-0 up, you know, it's, you're still risking giving away or dropping two points by conceding a dodgy equaliser. Wolves had a corner. It was cleared away to the edge of the box where Ruben Neves skillfully flicked it up with the outside of his right foot and then volleyed it home from, must have been 35 yards or so. Unbelievable finish. Uh, I remember everybody sat shouting, shoot, when it came to him. And then sort of groaning... Oh, he hasn't, oh, he's actually shot and then there was a gasp I've never heard a goal greeted like that with the, the sort of sounds I can remember it really clearly the the groans and the shouts of shoot and then the delirium afterwards uh, I like as well watching the, the slow motion clip of it going in and you can see the people in the south bank with their, their jaws wide open in disbelief of uh, what we've just seen. And finally, the final moment of 2018 for me. Now, I must stress that I'm recording this on Friday at about 3 o'clock before the Liverpool game. So if we end up beating Liverpool 3-0, that will probably surpass this moment. But in the Premier League, we've seen Wolves play really well against lots of top six opposition, getting a point against Manchester City, getting a point away at Old Trafford, a point away at the Emirates, played well against Tottenham, but we haven't beaten the big team until Chelsea came to town. We're on the back of five defeats out of six. We were not playing particularly well. And we go 1-0 down in that game due to a big deflected shot by Ruben Loftus-Cheek off Conor Cody. Uh, and then the, the game changed on a massive tackle from Ryan Bennett who sprinted across to stop William making it 2-0 because he surely would have done it and that would have been before half-time and that would have been game over. We managed to go into half-time at 1-0. And then two goals in four minutes from Jimenez and from Jota just turned the game on its head and we contained Chelsea for the rest of the game then they weren't able to make many chances at all and to get the first win in such a long time was amazing and then it started the ball rolling again on our season at that point we were sort of starting to think about a relegation battle but with that we've started to look up the table again now and and hopefully we're only 10 points away from safety at the moment really and we can start looking up for maybe a European spot and what we need to remember as well is that was Morgan Gibbs-White's first ever Premier League start as well. which uh, And he had a hand in the first goal with a beautiful through ball for Jimenez. Thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope it's not too long and not too rambly for you. But I've had a really, really great year following the Wolves this year. And just wanted to share some of my favourite moments with you. If you agree with them, let me know. If you disagree with them, let me know as well. And please vote on the poll that's on the video somewhere. Uh, for your favourite moment. And don't forget to tune back in tomorrow for the alternative moment of the year. Thank you very much.